for all verified facts. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello and welcome to From the Frontlines. I'm Govind Rajathi Raj. Now, an advertisement on television showing an interfaith love uh, marriage triggered a huge backlash on social media. The marriage in this case, of course, had happened earlier with the jewellery brand Tanish being the target and being accused of promoting something called Love Jihad. The company withdrew the advertisement, citing hurt sentiments and the well-being of its staff because they were uh, threatened, uh, mostly on social media, but in a manner that could have well turned physical as well. More importantly, and to uh, bring us to the subject that we're talking about today, all the leading advertising bodies in the country and globally have come out in support of, support of this advertisement. The advertising club has said, on behalf of Indian media and advertising agencies that it condemns the threatening and targeting of Tanishq employees in, re in regard to this uh, latest advertisements. The Advertising Standards Council of India has similarly found nothing wrong with this advertisement or whether uh, or that it affects any sensibilities or is there there's something wrong. Uh, and similarly, the uh, International Advertising Association has also come out in support. So there is uh, obviously uh, ringing support for this advertisement, the nature uh, uh, of the product in question, the, the context in which it was uh, created. And we're not really talking about now the advertisement in itself. The question really is, when there are big brands like this, when there are companies, what do they do? Is there a new code of conduct that they have to really try and adhere to, one which they don't know and they only find out when maybe people start knocking at their showrooms uh, with uh, 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 near physical threats? or there is a backlash on social media which also targets some of their employees or how in how in reality can they try and create connection with their brands in an environment perhaps where even creating connection and thus showing emotions like love affection between people can be so challenging so that's a question i'm posing today to my two panelists and uh, both experts uh, in this world harish bijur brand strategy uh, expert who's worked, of course, with uh, many leading uh, uh, companies and multinationals in the past. Uh, Ambi Parmeshwaran, founder of brandbuilding.com, also renowned uh, advertising industry veteran. Thank you both for joining me. So, Ambi, uh, first question to you. So, if you are the company or if I am the company, how do I view this incident going forward? Well, I think uh, there are obviously some lessons to be taken out of this uh, whole incident. I think the, the problem is, I think, one of timing. I, I love the ad. So let me come up front. I think the ad is a beautiful ad. And in fact, yesterday I was teaching a class uh, at SPJMR and we discussed this ad, which was the Integrated Marketing Communication course. We discussed the ad and we I asked the students, you know, what do you think about it? You know, what do you find objectionable? In fact, very interestingly, one of the students turns out to be a, a Muslim who's married to a Hindu girl. And he said at the eighth month of the of her pregnancy, they had what is called Walagapu. Walagapu in Tamil is equivalent to Godbarai or, or Baby Shar. And he said, we don't normally do it. But, you know, Muslims don't do it. But, you know, since my wife is Hindu and she likes these things, so we actually did that. You know, they actually, you know, so in a sense, what they showed in all that pomp and glory is something probably which is happening in in many many uh, muslim households you know married to a hindu girl and probably a hindu household where uh, there's a muslim girl coming in as a as a bahu so i think it is it is it's based on a human truth this is happens however i think the problem is the time the place right uh, currently i think one is uh, there is the whole nation is going through a bit of a challenge. You know, jobs are being lost. Uh, people are literally on the edge. Uh, and I was talking to someone yesterday that uh, maybe, you know, Amitabh Bachchan should come back and do a Diwar too because there are a lot of, lot of angry young people out there. Okay. And so it's like a tinderbox, right? In the tinderbox, even a little bit of spark can create a fire. So that, that one, I think that... Uh, the timing was wrong. The second is, of course, the age, the company did this before Diwali, and Diwali is a big season, uh, and and therefore you're worried that what's going to happen to the season. And the third, of course, is the fact that what happens if people go and loot your shops? And I think uh, in the social media, they even shared the photograph of someone who was a brand manager 
apparently on Tanish, which I don't know how far it's true because you don't believe anything which comes on WhatsApp. So I think that again must have compounded the problem. To say, look, you know, let's just back off, uh, back off from this. Now this leads, in a sense, uh, going to a to a bigger problem. And uh, a lot of people said, no, how did you back off? You should have continued. Blah 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 blah. Now let's let's be clear. Advertising's job is not to change society. Changing society is in the hand of families, is in the hand of religious leaders, in the hand of politicians. Maybe to some extent, movies. Maybe, but job of advertising is not to change society. It is not to change the the way Hindus see Muslims and Muslims see Hindus, or the way husband sees a wife and a wife sees a husband, etc. That's not the job of advertising at all. Advertising job. Is to convince a customer that my brand is a good brand. Come and buy the brand. But what has happened in the last ten years, uh, probably driven by a Western European outlook, everyone is saying I need to infuse this social consciousness into my brand. You know, I need to put that into my detergent. I need to put that into my soap. I need to put that into my shampoo. I need to put. I think maybe, maybe we've done too much of that. Maybe time has come for as as a marketing community, uh, we need to pull back and say, look. Uh, what should we do? What should we not do? What are the safeguards you need to take? And so, uh, I'm sure that you know a lot of companies. Morning, I was talking to someone who said, "Look, in their group, they've had a discussion saying, 'Look, guys, you know, uh, we are very, very, you know, everyone has become very sensitive. Be careful about what you do. Right. Uh, these are the lines. Don't cross these lines. And if you're crossing these lines, please come to us for us to give you a clearance.' Right. So somewhere." I think in the last 10 years, uh, there has been this excessive, you know. So everyone wants to save the earth. Everyone wants to save that girl child. Everyone wants to save that poor orphan studying under the steam plant. You know, there is this very funny video. You know, attention, can jury members, can you have the can awards five times a year? Because you know, shot in Dharavi, where the kids say, you know, for three months I get food, I get everything because people are coming and shooting, you know, various uh, videos here. So I think somewhere marketers have to say, look, I need to pull back. Yes, right. Uh, I right. can't overboard. So having said right. that, okay. let me just. I love the ad. Okay, so that's uh, that. I've gone on record to say I like the ad. Right. Okay. So uh, there are a couple of points you've raised, uh, uh, Ambi, and uh, they all uh, merit uh, deeper uh, uh, discussion. So uh, let me uh, come to you, Harish. So first is timing. Uh, is there anything about timing that is uh, wrong, or is this, uh, or will timing always be wrong? Of course, uh, timing is upset by the fact that you're up against uh, social media warriors, which technically could, did not exist until maybe even about five or six years ago. Well, uh, Govind, I do believe uh, you know timing for woke is always wrong uh, because woke is never meant to be behind the curve. Woke is meant to be ahead of the curve. And woke is meant to be one step ahead of the consumer, rather than with the consumer or behind the consumer. So to that extent, you know, uh, it could be timing. It may not be timing. I completely agree that we live in very sensitive and sensitized times. And these are times when you know uh, there are issues. And one of the biggest issues is the pandemic itself, because the pandemic itself creates enough mental health issues, which is hitting all of us. So we don't want anything else to add to the, those mental health issues. Having said that, the key question that emerges is: Must brands tread where angels fear to tread? Uh, by that I mean, you know, what is brand role? Is the brand defining for itself a larger role than it must at this point of time, given the fact that we live in sensitive society? We live in non-woke society, and we live in a society where we are still climbing uh, the basics of marketing and branding, and trying to grapple uh, with the food, clothing, shelter issues that we have. So, one last point would be to say that, hey, listen, guys, must marketeers climb Maslow's hierarchy so far up the mountain, or must marketeers restrict the ourselves? And themselves uh, to the roti kabda makan issues, to societal issues which are very related to that roti kabda and makan, and not climb right. to the self-actualization phase on that mountain. So that mountain will come, but its time is possibly not now. 
No, but, but Harish, these uh, these kinds of advertisements have come in the past as well, uh, and nothing has happened. Oh no, uh, I would disagree with you, Govind, to say that you know nothing has happened. A lot has happened. I mean, HUL has gone through the throes of this with Surf Excel at yeah. a point of time, which was just exactly Correct. Again, one year very ago. Very recently. No, no. What I say is, when so I say in the past, I mean so over the decade or so. Yeah. Okay, so so all I'm saying is, um, you know, you can push the envelope uh, with a certain measure in small baby steps, but you can't push the envelope in too much of a leap, particularly when it comes to India. Uh, you know, when we talk religion, we are very, very sensitive about that space. Uh, the entire country is very sensitive about religion. So one must be careful, possibly. The second thing we are very sensitive about is cricket, okay? But maybe far lower on the on the hierarchy. But between these two things, I think, you know, particularly religion, uh, possibly brands need to say that, hey, listen, there are certain inner sanctum issues which you and I must not touch. And religion is that, you know, sanctum sanctorum issue which you and I should not touch. Correct. But I, I, I did not want to get into the advertisement, but let me just briefly uh, do so. Uh, Ambi, now the, the, the advertisement, as has been also endorsed by all the advertising bodies, does not do anything that is uh, either confrontational, it does not do anything that is in violation of any code, uh, it does not do anything that's derogatory. Uh, so it's being attacked for what it is depicting, which is also reality, as you yourself said. Yeah, you know, uh, Harish said that, right? I mean, the point is, uh, uh, in my other book, I've written this thing called hype. You know, there's this concept called hyper visual, hyper visualization, hyper ritualization, which is where you uh, hyper visualize. Sorry, where you visualize men to be stronger and women to be weaker, etc. And I and I created a concept called neo visualization. So imagine a better future, like for example, Diartel where the wife is actually better educated and she's the you know husband's boss so those are things which you know brands have done brands have pushed the envelope uh, a little bit further ahead in this case also i think they have visualized a more idealistic world where you know this all thing is very nice and uh, you know muslim bride you know hindu bride is very nicely embraced and they, everyone is celebrating it but maybe Maybe some semiotic codes triggered this because it looked like a North Indian Muslim family. Uh, and maybe that pressed uh, some wrong button. Suppose the same thing was clearly Malayali. Let's say a Malayali Muslim family and a Malayali, uh, let's say, Hindu woman. Suddenly, you know, things things get a little bit, or, or a Tamil, things get a little bit, you know, more, uh, more friendlier because, of course, this whole right. religious thing is stronger there. So... Yeah, I, I don't know whether I answered your question, but yeah. No, no not exactly. But Ambi, let me put a slightly different question. And, and I mentioned this in the uh, at the outset. Now, you know, uh, the reason, I mean, this is a jewelry brand. Uh, this is not a scooter or a car uh, or an Airtel connection. So they, when you want to sell a jewelry brand, obviously you want to create a sense of, uh, you know, kinsmanship. I don't know if that's the right word here. But basically, uh, you know, sense of family, sense of loving, sense of affection, something that goes beyond. And of course, uh, as a jewelry brand, you're also fighting against 10 other jewelry brands. So you want to show something, bonding and so on, which is of a slightly higher grade. Now, if a company, and I'm sure you know many companies in this space, is trying to sell uh, or project something, therefore, uh, 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 you know, lure, not luring, but uh, inviting people to come and buy its product, wouldn't they have to do things like this? Well, you don't need to. You don't need to do this inter-religious stuff, right? That's where probably uh, you got to be a little more sensitive, given the uh, current mood of the nation. Uh, they have done, for example, uh, some years ago, they did that uh, uh, second marriage film, right? Now, that second marriage film, they actually showed a typical Hindu marriage happening. Uh, I don't know, maybe the time was okay then. There was no Hindu backlash. They could have techni technically been a Hindu backlash saying, look, in our Hindu Shastra, a second marriage like this, how did you depict? You know, who allowed you to uh, make her do a Saat Fera and uh, the, uh, her bridegroom is actually carrying her 
a little kid and going yeah. around south yeah. no so maybe at that time ambi the number of uh, whatsapp users were half uh, as what they are today maybe that's the reason yeah today that same ad which all of us loved may have got trolled right uh, today someone would have said which religious guru allows you to say this you know how can you do this second marriage second marriage hamara shastra mein nahi hai whatever you know so that that could happen so i think we got to be a little bit more right. sensitive what is happening around us that's a uh, that's a lesson Harish, uh, you know, you said uh, you, uh, the word, uh, or rather, you use the term "woke." Now, uh, I don't know. I'm, my question is: Is woke a defensive uh, uh, strategy or a defensive position in a manner? Because what we are saying really is that uh, one is that you are depicting something. Secondly, uh, you are depicting something that is very well happening around you, and you are trying to perhaps uh, anticipate, maybe, or you didn't anticipate how people could have reacted in an extreme, either liberal or Uh, uh right wing uh, context now which is fine but why should you as a brand be then uh, worried about putting out something which for you will be a strong positioning statement and and okay now uh, this is a long uh, way of putting the question but there are many examples uh, abroad uh, i mean the brands like nike uh, and others keep doing this you know how, uh, strong statements very uh, uh, you know in the in the case of black lives matter for example and uh, people don't like it and they and they do get attacked for it but that doesn't change uh, either the brand's position or the company's position and life pretty much comes back to normal after that yeah if you really look at uh, woke i mean you know it is uh, it is not they, these are not concepts that come out from mars or neptune but they are actually happening in our society and therefore woke is always plucked from stuff that's happening in society but we need to understand how anecdotally that stuff is happening or how widespread a manner that particular stuff is happening now needless to say woke is meant to take the anecdotal and make it into a widespread movement woke is meant to wake you and i up woke is meant to make us sit up and take note and maybe change our behavior and attitude and use it eventually because after all advertising and marketing is about usage as well therefore if you look at this piece of advertising it's a beautiful piece of advertising uh, it's a very emotive has made a lot of people cry when they look at it uh, has a lot of emotion in it but i think what has uh, gotten affected in the bargain is that out there in the market there are a whole set of people who are either appreciating or not appreciating the advertising so there is aggression on that count and today what really happens is once a hashtag actually starts off it's very difficult to control that hashtag and so a boycott thanish is a hashtag which is very very difficult to control so if you ask me i think the brand uh, the advertising did a lot uh, and and it has created uh, uh, you know a lot of attention for ekatvam and for thanish and for titan the company and for the tatas uh if you look at it it's achieved all that but there is a lesson for marketers and that key lesson is that we must carefully assess how many steps ahead of the consumer are we in our communication or uh, how many steps backwards we are we must not okay. be backwards but we must be at par with the consumer right uh ambi you know companies brands uh, marketers uh people like yourself in some ways uh, take rightful pride in designing a message uh and having some freedom to obviously uh, disseminate that message and then achieving the results uh greater sale of product acceptance amongst consumers and so on but this is uh changing so in that sense are now companies helpless are brands going to be or are they now helpless in terms of what they want to say and can they really truly communicate the attributes they want to I think so you know um uh I think this is a lesson to be careful about what you're saying right and uh, have an extra filter if required to say that are we going to upset someone somewhere right and and beyond that you life goes on you see because 99% of advertising is straightforward advertising you look at all the ads on on ipl today it's all straight forward advertising you know you're selling a benefit crore dollar log order kar diya you know you're doing very simple 
simple rational or simple emotional attachment. So, in the last ten years, you know, a lot of companies are saying rational, emotional is not enough. You need to add a social pillar to your brand communication. The social pillar could be saving water. Social pillar could be help a child reach five years of age. Social pillar could be woman empowerment. Social pillar could be right. You know. Children achieving their dream, so that will stay. But today, you need to have put that one little caution, saying, given I'm saying again, given the mood, you know, we used to do this big study called Mind and Mood. So, given the mind and mood of the nation, are you going to be upsetting someone? If they get upset, what is your plan B? What is your plan C? What is your plan D? Right? Maybe they'll not get upset. Uh, which is fine, but if they get upset, what are you going to do? So you got to have that. What I think Tanishk has done rightly is quickly pulled out. But what I think is unfair is a lot of social media personalities attacking them for pulling it out so quickly. Because they had their reasons. I think you got just as you admire them for the work they do, you got to say okay. The you know they have said okay, we are pulling it out. Okay, you know. So I don't think this incident is going to suddenly put. You know, shackles on every copywriter in the universe, or at least in India, to say, "Oh, now I need to watch out what the trolls will say." No, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. But uh, if at all, I mean, you said in the beginning that uh, the companies you are talking to are already advising caution. So they, you know, at the top, it is uh, a, a little bit of caution, but by the time it goes down, it's almost uh, a blanket censorship or self-censorship, isn't it? <laughs> I think no. I don't think so. I don't think it's blanket censorship. I think what what companies are saying is, look. If you're doing something like this, be extra sensitive, and there's nothing wrong with that. So be extra sensitive. Okay. Like if you remember, you know, once there was a big campaign some people were doing about how you got to become, you know, gender stereotyping. You know, you were you were actually training hundreds of copywriters to say, yeah, without knowledge, without even thinking, you're stereotyping boys and girls. Don't do that. So now the same thing they're saying, yeah, sort of religious sentiment co. Keep it in the back of your mind, because just because advertising is ma and marketing is full of these so maybe so-called secular left-leaning uh, intellectuals, the world is not that way. The world is very different, and we know the whole world. I'm talking about not just India. The world is not that. Right. So be a little more sensitive, and there's there's no harm in that. It doesn't mean that I'm going to you know lock you up and put you in chains and say write your write the script. No, not at all. Right. Okay. Last couple of questions. Uh, Harish, uh, can I come to you first now? Uh, are brands helpless uh, in, and will they now uh, be forced to self-censor? Well, I think brands will definitely sit up and take note. Uh, one, they will ensure that sensitivity is at a peak level when you look at society, and brands will have a better finger on the pulse of the consumers. Because please note, brands understand one thing out of this, and brands know it all the time. In fact. One creative can be read in two ways, if not in 20 ways. The important part of a creative is the fact that that one creative must be read by the largest numbers of people in one manner. The takeout must be positive uh, by the largest numbers. But obviously, in cases where there's tumult such as this, there's possibly 50% of the market is taking one story out. Another 50% is taking another story out, which is at cross purposes with one another. And therefore, but, advertising must become much more technical. But we Harish, have uh, in this particular to case, uh, and Harish, uh, in, this, in, in this particular case, Harish, we have no evidence that 50% uh, of the audience has uh, interpreted it one way or another 50%. Agree, for agree. All you know, but only 5% has reacted. Let, let me quantify that. Let me quantify that. See, gone are the days of the non-digital life that you and I led in the old days. Today is the day and age when digital is very, very large. In terms of revenue, we're talking about 31% of total advertising revenue coming from digital, and it's going to become 50%, which means that we need to start respecting the digital vehicles. One, digital is not niche anymore. Digital is mass, very mass, as mass as that WhatsApp which you're holding on your phone, which means that, you know, that many number of people are getting this uh, uh, television commercial on that particular screen. And therefore, digital sensitivity means having the ability to mine and find out who is the troll and who is the real consumer out there. 
And if you're able to distinguish between the two, there will be more confident advertising, cutting edge advertising coming in the future. Ambi, uh, looking forward, uh, do you see brands really saying what they want to say when they want to connect with their uh, consumers, potential consumers, who they understand and have researched, or will they be helpless? I think brands uh, are not going to be helpless. Brands uh, will say what they have to say about the product, about the service. But I think this whole thing about I'll become Mahatma Gandhi, I'll become Vinoba Bhave, and I'll change the universe, that's not going to happen. So that is there is a wake-up call for that. And uh, and I think also what Hari said is that, look, it is a digital, there is a digital very small number maybe making a lot of noise, but they're going to attract a lot of, you know, just as a light attracts a lot of, you know, flies, it, they will attract a lot. So you've got to be careful. So maybe this Tanish thing went, you know, went digital first. It didn't go TV. I wonder if they had broken it out on TV. Bang. What would have happened? I, I just don't know. I can only visualize that then they could have got a lot of people supporting it on day one before the before the trolls started attacking. In fact, the first time I heard about it was someone who sent it to me saying, this is a very bad ad. And uh, uh, and I and I replied to him. I saw the ad. I had not seen it. I saw the ad and said, I love it. I'm sorry. So he said, okay. You know, so I think, uh, I think, I think, uh, you know, copywriters, brands have to be a little more sensitive to society. They have to understand that everyone is not like them. You know, there is, uh, Ogilvy said that, right? Uh, right. Uh, consumer is, uh, you know, uh, not your wife or your wife, whatever he said. He said that, and I, I'm saying, yeah, he said consumer is your wife, so don't talk down to her. I'm now saying that uh, consumer is not your wife. She may be different. So be sensitive to that. So I think if it improves the sensitivity of our marketing and branding and advertising community, I think it'll be good. I don't think, I don't think this is going to mean we are all going to be living in uh, in some kind of isolation, writing very boring scripts. I think there is still a lot of very good, very interesting, fun, uh, lovable, enjoyable, emotional scripts that can be written about products like like toothpaste and and jewelry right. and telecom services. Right. Uh, Ambi, absolutely. Last question. We're running out of time. So, do you think when a brand or any brand, you know, and we've had cases, uh, including recent times, where maybe brands have been a little more strong, uh, in this case, has pulled back, and and I'm not getting into the reasons. But what's the residual uh, image of that brand? Was it a strong brand in retrospect? Was it a, uh, you know, was it a brand that uh, wanted to make amends? Uh, is there any? I mean, what what is it going to be remembered for, or does it not I matter did... in this particular category? I don't think it's going, I don't, you know, there's an old, I had an American boss for, for a year and he, I remember him telling me any publicity is good publicity, you know. Uh, so he said, yeah, you know, people will say this controversy happened with Tanish, uh, this has happened and the Tanish, 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 the brand will stay, right. So brand, I don't think, you know, a brand like Tanish has been built so assiduously, so carefully by Titan is going to get majorly tarnished by this one episode. I don't think so. Uh, I think if at all, uh, some group uh, uh, are saying, yeah, you know, they're poor people, they've been attacked. Uh, there is, of course, a very small minority saying, no, 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 they should not have withdrawn the ad. But I think, right. I don't think it's going to, if at all, I, I think uh, the brand loyal customers of Tanishq will have that much empathy and sympathy towards their brand. Right. right. And I think and, uh Got it. Harish, uh, last quick last word from you. Will uh, will uh, people remember uh, brands like, uh, in this case, Tanishq for being strong or, uh, you know, amenable or something else? Well, I think people will remember Tanishq to be a practical and pragmatic brand. And I think that's important. Uh, you know, on a lighter way, uh, you know, when I look at this controversy, I'd love to say uh, that, you know, marketing sentiment was depressed by the pandemic. Advertising sentiment was totally depressed. But thanks to this, you know, in some way or the other, on a lighter way, uh, the sentiment is back. Right. And <laughs> let's hope that uh, we can ride that sentiment in a positive way and uh, hope that people uh, eventually go and uh, buy jewelry if they want to, uh, even as we run into festival season. Uh, thank you both, uh, Ambi and Harish, for joining me. Thank you.